the Levels Podcast. I'm Justin Hortle, joined as always by... We've got a couple now, OG. <laughs> Widamu Mason. Yeah. Obviously, the OG is William. Yeah. And then there's Viliami. We've got in in the comments. There's Viliami. That's a that's, to, that's Viliami's Tong, Tongan, Tongan descent. One. Tongan descent. Now the, the Wudamu. Yeah. And then and then we're getting Witties and Villies as well. <laughs> like nicknames. Now it's been abbreviated. God, they can't just stick to one. Oh. Eh? Witties and Vitties. I love it though. We've got a we've got a great little audience. We've got yeah, a, we do. You know, great followers. Uh, they love getting involved in it. That was great, mate. I still can't get over um, the involvement and how. Uh, how embraced we were up in up in Brisbane. Yeah, you know, everything that we did, it was good. We did everything right. We did, um, you know, it was good. It was just good, con- good content. And then, um, you know, the Caxton, the Ivy Blue. I forgot one. Alfred's. I forgot one. It was the most important one. Your your team, the Bulldogs. You're an yeah. ambassador for the Bulldogs. They looked after us. We got in there in the suite. We got to watch it with some of the <laughs> most diehard Bulldogs fans. And the all be- great and the people. Best, and the best Bulldog. And the best Bulldog of all time. The Barber, the OG, yeah. the quadruple OG. Quadruple OG. Uh, <clears throat> like not even just trying to give him a rap because of who he is. He's like one of the best humans yeah. there is. You know, like, and a lot, that's why. Um, Guys stay in the game like that. Yeah. Obviously, his his legend on the field is always going to be strong, but he's always going to be a part of the club because the way he's interacting with with the fans, just yeah. like you, Mace. I got a, obviously massive rap to you as well. Um, you are both beloved, but there's yeah, there's like levels. Mate, but like he, there's he, levels. He transcends like through like the eighties, the nineties, two thousands, and even still he's relevant now because if you know. If you love the Bulldogs, you love Bar. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's address something as well. There's no guy in the middle anymore. Uh, so right. I just want to let everyone know there's a few comments. Um, we got to a decision with, with DJ Tigertown. He was doing a bit of an internship with us. Yeah. We're just looking at the plans long term. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be bringing uh, DJ Tigertown back. Just want to just say, first of all, uh, it was sort of like a decision we are making before Magic Round. That's why we flew him yeah. up, Mace. So we want to give him a little thank you. He did a great job. He's... Uh, He's uh, I was so surprised by his DJ skills. Yeah, he he's, killed it. He's he actually got it. mad skills. So if you're looking for a DJ, go hit him up. Um, you we'll, we'll tag we'll tag uh, we'll we'll put his uh, Instagram name, Lukey, um, and go hit him up. If you've got a DJ going on, because legit, I'm not even just saying this. He was really good. Uh, we just had to make a decision long term with the internship and, and whatnot. And so it, it was a tough one. But at the end of the day, it was an internship. It wasn't it was. like we were hiring him. Yeah. It was an internship, you know. So we just went, okay, we'll just see how we go, see if we need him, see what he can bring to the table. He's a good kid. He's, he's a, good a great kid. kid. And he's very young and he's very yeah. raw. He's got to work on a few little things. I told him what he needed to work on to get to get to these levels. Do you know what I mean? If stay wants, in the content if wants, game. If he wants to stay in the content game. Yeah. If he wants to be a DJ, if he wants to be a journalist because he's got a journalistic background. Yeah. Keep working on his skills. Keep honing your skills, you know. And maybe in two or three years he might be he might be back here. Maybe a year. Like if he keeps doing if he keeps doing the right thing, you know. Because yep, he, really, sure. he really wants this. So if he really wants it, he'll go back to the drawing board, assess what he's been doing the last sort of, you know. Couple three, of months with us. You know, a couple of months and then he'll, he'll come back a better person. So, you know, good luck to him. He's a good kid. I like he is. Him. Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of love for him. Um, and you know what? He's a good, he's a good little punching bag too. Well, yeah, yeah. He, he took it well. So he's good. No, he was good. Hey, nothing but love for him. Um, like you said, we might be in a better position where you know we're in a position to offer him a little bit something yeah. a little bit later down the road. But we're still starting up ourselves as trying to find our feet. So yeah. the way we find our feet is the likes and subscribes. OG, yes. we need to get those follow. We need to get those rating reviews. We're at 6K now. So, 6K. You know, three weeks ago, I was asking for 5K. We got to six with it. I didn't even have to ask for six and we're here already off the back of the vlog, um, which was great yeah, last was night great. as well. So hopefully, let's keep shooting. I'm not even going to ask for seven, OG. Get it's all your friends on board. Let's get to 10. Get to 10. Let's get to 10. 10. A good number. Get to 10. I'm going to keep fucking drumming it down until we get to 10. There's so much, you know, I feel like slowly people were drip feeding over. Um, there's so much There's so much good content on YouTube, you know, whether you follow on the we're bloke of the bars, started. Hello Sports, all these guys that established. We're, we're just trying get, to- We're only getting started. What is it? Round, it's round 10. It is. There's yeah. levels of shit. Yeah. Right? Once we start doing what we, what we planned on doing- it's gonna hit, it's gonna go it's gonna skyrocket out of this place for sure, and that is just like our partners. So grateful, so much love for our partners, the Tab and BSC. They are the OGs of yes. their respective industries, and that's where we're trying to get to in the podcast game. So keep helping us out. But right now, stop what you're doing. 
All right, go and join the new Levels Punters Club. Click the LPC Bets on the Bets Friends channel. That's only on the Tab app, so get amongst it. And while you're there, why don't you treat yourself to a bit of high-protein yeah, vanilla? Anyway. Uh, you know what, OG, let's get into the uh, – Anyway, so hydroxy shred, right? I think we, you know, we were up there for four days. Yep. I don't think we were we weren't eating as healthy as we want to be. No, so no, no. The shred is the best thing. A couple of kilos off you. So yeah, hit it with the spoon. Hit it with the spoon. Hit it with the spoon. There we go. Um, this is the best way. In yep. the morning, just jam this right. I just, in need, I just need a little pick me up too, like little a, little, pick a, up. a little perk, a little perk. Little Kendrick, yeah, just just one of the Kendrick Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> you give me a twist too. All right, so the hyd- why well, that's getting done. The hydroxy bone shred is neurothermogenic, which Here can be used to support long-lasting and increased energy production, supports focus, clarity, concentration, and cognitive function, supports metabolism, mm. plus it's rich in antioxidants. Currently available in Coles, Chemist Warehouse, online at bodyscience.com.au and in independent supplement retailers. OG, mind if I have a little sip on this while you tell me how good yours is? No, mate, it's great. I take this every morning, especially if I've... If- yeah, that, that tastes so good, man. If it's so. been a big weekend or if, you, if you've been off your diet for a couple of days, this will straighten you right back up. Kickstart a session? Yeah, it'll kickstart your metabolism. Are, and everything you, are like you having that. this before or after your session? Before. Okay. Have it before. Have a chaos before. And I'll have that collagen in the morning and then um, then I'll hit the gym. Yep. Do something else and then all the after, after stuff. It's mad. The body science has got everything. Everything. Beautiful. Grateful for the body science. All right, OG, let's get into the stories. Just one this week that I thought was uh, newsworthy or something that I wanted to address. Yep. Um, Jack Bird. Uh, he's instantly felt bad is the headline. Bird apologises for shock swipe at fans, but NRL Grape says he should know better. So what do you do? He come out a- in support of Hook. I'll give you the exact comments here, okay. just so you, there's context for you, OG. Jack Bird has issued an apology to Red V fans for his comments on Wednesday, stating he was just trying to stick up for his coach. On Wednesday, uh, he declared that fans didn't know much about footy. After reports surfaced that they were plotting a protest, so this is important, I think, a protest against the embattled Dragons and calling for Anthony Griffin to be sacked. They've got a lot to say about people on the field, obviously referring to himself and the criticism he copped uh, a couple of years ago, you know, during all that injuries. I don't think they've ever played a game of footy. I'm speaking from first-hand stuff of copped. I feel sorry for Hook. It's us out there playing, so we should be the ones getting the blame. Fans are good for the game and stuff like that, but it comes to a point where you can't, Cop so much criticism over the players and coaching staff. I don't see a problem with what he said. I don't see a problem either. That's why I wanted to get address it. Birdie, double down, baby. Birdie, we got you double back. Double down on that. God, he's exactly right. Fans don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on in clubs. Not at they, all. And the, and the, and the, and the coaching, coaches always get the blame. You know, the, the players are underperforming down there. Yeah, you know for mean? sure. It, it can't be the coach, He's one that's not coach, too, so he can say it. The coach can take a little bit of a blame. You know, the coach has a game plan. You know, if you don't implement the game plan, if you're not, and if you're getting done by just stupid mistakes and undisciplined, all those kind of things, which they are doing, drop balls, incompletions, all those little things where a professional teams should be good at. Yep. They're just falling behind in those little things. They rely on Ben Hunt a fair bit. Too much. Too bit. Too, the, too much. You got you got this um, um money kid, mate. We, we need to see what he's we need to see what he's like. Okay, we need Dev, to see, Devil's Advocate, just yeah. one quickly, Mace. So the, I think the big frustration is the over the last couple of years not blood in Amone and Sullivan and Sloan and that together. So I think that's where and look, I will say straight away, even though I fully agree with Jack Bird. You don't know what happens within the four walls of no. um, the situation of the Dragons. I also, though, agree with – I don't think Hook is the guy moving forward. I want to clarify no. that as well. But the protesting thing for me, Mace, is silly. And I think that's where uh, the frustration with the Red V fans comes from is the fact that they want to see the next gen. And there's got to be – are we uh, – is Hook put in the best possible team to make the Dragons a better team, not only this year but moving forward? No, I don't think he is. And that's probably why he's he's not going to be there next year. Correct. Hook is old school. What happens is if you're an old school coach and you don't evolve with these new players, with their new – with with the – their, their attitude and the way they have, their swag, they act they're, – they're different. They're not – you're not coaching – Old school players like myself. You couldn't do that Jack 20 Bird. years ago. Jack Bird is old school. So yeah. we don't give a fuck. Jack mate. DeBellin, old Jack, school. Jack DeBellin. So all these blokes that are saying and sticking up for Hook, 
They're old school, mate. You can mm. treat them like you know. You can treat them like back in our day. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they'll cop it. They want to be trained hard. They want. They want the. They want the harsh words. They want to get. They want to get criticised. Crit- I mean, crit- critiqued, critiqued. Critiqued. And they don't take it personal. They just want to get better. But on the flip side, when you got 19, 20 year olds, twenty one year olds in key positions in your on your on your team, and you criticise them and you come down on them hard. They don't like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's the difference between like a Wayne Bennett. Like he doesn't do that. Knows how to manage every group. He knows how to manage every single person. He doesn't rule everyone with one ruler. You know what I mean? Like there's no measuring stick for everyone. No, he's not going to coach the young Katoa like he's going to coach Jesse Bromwich. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's the difference, you know? In a way he gets Jesse to coach him. Hook hasn't really evolved as a coach. I agree with that. You know, like, and I, agree I, and with I that. think Hook's a great. I think he's a good coach. He's a good. He's a decent coach. I think but Hook he, might be an assistant coach at this point. But he's not, he hasn't evolved with the rest of the coaches because this younger generation to come through, they're different. Mm. They're different. They're sensitive. They're not that resilient. You know, like you can't coach resilience. You got to go through it. You got to go through games and all that kind of stuff. So these young kids like the Armonis and that. You haven't even given him a chance to fucking be the man yet. Mm. I understand Ben Hunt is your man, but fuck me. You want to run that kid into the ground or what? Mm. Like Ben Hunt's been down there for four years, been their best player for four years. Yeah, He's getting 30 or 40 touches a game. He gets has to kick, he has to kick the touch, he has to do general play kicking. Defend, one-on-one rates. Do, mate, he does everything. He does everything for that team. Now they're thinking about putting him in hooker. Yeah. yeah he plays hooker for Australian Queensland. It's enough. Mm. You want to burn this guy out? Yeah. You want to play him week in, week out at hooker? No, mate. You got to give these other kids a chance to shine. And I think that's that's I spoke to a couple of the St. George boys after the game. And as I said, there is frustration. I spoke, isn't there? I spoke to the younger guys, whole different conversation than speaking to Jack Bird or a DeBellin or That's experience though too, mate. I know. When you a, become or, an OG, you don't you keep a, it close to your Belak, chest. Or a big big mudders lorry. Yeah. I did, I've, I've, met, I've met him. And he He's just, a legend. And he just fucking laughed. Yeah. I said, come here, big boy. Give, <laughs> give him a big heart. He goes, no, no, I'm sweaty. I said, come, bring it in. Bring it in. Who gives a shit? Bring it in for same, the same thing, as Birdie. But, you know, but then speak, I'm not even going to name these other guys that I spoke to. They're like, bro, he's just too old school. Mm. You know, like I just, you know, I can't, can't relate to him. He just doesn't, you know, he puts so much pressure on Ben Hunt. And they feel sorry for Hunt. They love Ben Hunt. Mm. But like, fuck, he can't do everything. You know, even Joey had a – Danny Badiris mm. – Steve Simpson mm. and all these other great Kirk players Gidley. up there. Kirk Gidley took a little bit of pressure on him, off him. Um, JT had some great players around him. Every team's had Every Matty team, Bowens, Matt put, Scotts, James Tamos. Put that all on Benny mm. Hunt. Yeah, I mean, just because he's on money, on big money, does not necessarily mean that he has to control the team and have all these touches. So I think how he's going about it, Hook is is wrong because he just he should work. He should um, share the workload with these younger kids and fucking let them prove they're not, you know, they're not babies anymore. They've been two or three years in the in the grade in the in grade. Mm. Like they've they've been in and out, in and out. Like yeah, s- big slow. couple of years for them, right? You know, yeah. Like they should, and I thought this year they would have really shined. Sloan, yeah. who got dropped last year, I, I understand why. They've shown gl- he's shown glimpses he's though shown for glimpses sure. Glimpses of brilliance. Amon is the big one where I think they they want to see a real step, and then Jaden Sullivan they haven't been able to. Every so that's- time Amoni gets. The lion's share of the ball, shit happens. Yeah, you know, like Zach dropping Zach, Zach Lomax. Is that good for him? Mm. You know, you got to be careful who you drop. Mm. You know, like would that can that young kid bounce back, go back to reserve grade, be the best player? Does that you know? I, does, I don't is think he going to be that. I don't think it would interest that's Lomax what, at this that's point. That's what right? I'm saying. You know, but if you dropped anyone like back in, you know, if you've got dropped. I don't, I've never been fucking dropped, but if I went back down there, I'd tear everyone's fucking head off and get back into first grade. Mm. I don't think he's going to do that. You, you, he's a first you, had, grader. you had a little stint at Newtown, and you fucking uh, yeah. how many meters did you run? Oh, fucking about three hundred. <laughs> 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 what it was? So you, no, you know, it was fun. It was yeah. fucking hard to play reserve grade yeah. because it was, they, it was Melbourne's reserve grade. Yeah, right? okay, okay. And they had all these blokes that played a shitload of first grade now. Yeah, and then it was a back page like because me and Nate, yours was from Mister Mina. Because you got dropped from Mister Mina. It was Mister Mina. Mina. Mina for yeah. sure. Yeah. not because of form. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I was playing for Australia and New South Wales. Uh, um, yeah, me and uh, Nate and myself got dropped and they fucking lined up on us big time. They had a crack? Yeah, we were playing at Wyong. It was just like we were playing, we were playing in front of 60,000 the week before and then we were playing at Wyong. Yeah. We took, mate, 
And I just caught we Central got Central Coast Central copping Coast strays Warriors, again. Yeah. That's why you hate Central Coast. Yeah, fucking hell. They got it. They got to me. And you know, when <laughs> Melbourne, they're really good wrestlers and they fucking come hit you, fucking mm. bang, 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 hit you three times. Yeah. They're lining up and then they had like, you know, the back page. This guy's a plumber during the day earning 60,000. I remember Willie that. on 600,000. I'm like, fucking who cares? Yeah. Like, yeah but, but it was good. But it was fun. Yeah. We went out there, played. With, played we, didn't, we didn't fucking just sit there in our dinner suits. Maybe get out there and ripped in. Yeah. And it's a it different was, mindset, just, though, just to what Lomax is going. And, and yeah. it was fun. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I get to fucking play for Newtown. Yeah. I always turn it into a positive. I yeah. got to play for Newtown. Yeah. Historic club. It's just it's a fucking it's, – it's Historic a, club. It's a foundation club. Yeah. I'm part of the Blue Bags history. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not sure. And, and I think coaches like Wayne Bennett and Craig Bellamy and all these great coaches that have been around for a while, they're very, very careful on who they drop to reserve grade because mm. it's not fucking good because it's not good for your confidence – and you start resenting the coaches and the club. It's very hard to bring it back, right? Yeah. When you, when, when you know, uh, like you're thinking, why am I getting dropped? Because that, Zach didn't play that bad against especially us. Especially if he's influential. That's big too, right? The and impact this, that he can have. And is this a way? Because I know that he's been on the, on the a little bit on the out. He had a bit of an attitude problem a couple of years ago. He's played all right last year. He started the year off not too bad. They swapped him, they've swapped him from right centre to left centre. So he doesn't have that flick anymore. Yep. So he's getting a little bit lost in defence. Um, but they're all fixable things because the kids can play. You got to coach this kid properly. You know, oh. like don't just go go play reserve grade. And what? What? Get more confidence out of playing reserve grade? Yeah. He's not going to get more confidence out of playing reserve grade. No. He's going to fucking end up hating you, hating the club, and probably wanting to release because that's how these kids act. It's not. It's not like fuck you. I'm going to go back be the best player in reserve grade. I'm going to come back and be a way better player. It's like, nah, man. Fuck another offer comes. I'm out of here. Well, Aaron Woods, I think, said it best like at what if you say so just say you are going to drop say if you're hook right this is you, you drop zach lamax back to reserve grade is there you got to have communication about like what needs to be worked on as yeah. well right if you just send zach lamax back and and go no you're like, back you're what's back. like what can and zach think- what can zach lamax learn in, in new south wales cup that he couldn't in first grade Nothing. anyway right because he on when it comes to that team, it's Ben Hunt is the most talented player by far, mm-hmm. and then it's probably next Zach Lomax Zach. and probably Zach uh, Jack Bird. Yeah. Really? Because I think just say the difference is I love about and I love about Ciro, right? Ciro is talking to these kids every day. Yeah, and he's he, he's about he's he's really personal personal. You have and, to be, and he brings. There's always kids coming in and out of his of his office. You know what I mean? So he's like he's giving you like constructive criticism, what you need to work on. And if you are dropped, he will tell you what you need to work on. And they usually go back to reserve grade and work on it. Mm. Um, and Some if great you, examples, and if, Braden and if, Burns yeah, and whatnot. And if, and if you're playing well, he's going to come in there and say you're playing well, but you need to work on this, you need to work on that. Birdo's coming in and out. Yep. You know, like uh, Pangai's coming in and out. You know, They're in there having conversations with him yep. about life, about how, how he's how, – how's, you know, and I think he's probably bought that out of the, he's probably taken little bits out of the Wayne Bennett's out of out yeah. of all the great coaches, and he's going to make himself that. He's going to be one of the great coaches, Ciro. Yeah, you know, but he but he's 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 a he's a player's coach. He cares about you. Yeah, you know, you can tell when that young kid Carl Oluapu o- 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 hugged him, cried. You know what I mean? It's like a father figure to this guy because mm-hmm. this kid is fucking eighteen years old. You know, his parents aren't there or anything like that. So he's fucking parents. Are going to be like all the role, all the coaching staff, mm. mentors. You know what I mean? We're all mentors to yeah. this young kid. You know, give him like fucking a big hug, and he's crying like when he got his debut, and then he saw it after the game. Who did he go straight to? Yeah, zero. Yeah, it's good stuff. You know what I mean? It's good a, stuff it's, it's from a, the con. You got a good content team too. With the you dogs. know, they're good. They're good guys. You know, but like that's the inf- that's the influence that Ciro has, and he knows the influence that he has, and these young kids love him. Yeah, and that's and that's special. Then you want that. And that's this is his first year of coaching. He only knows these guys. Imagine what's going to happen in three or four years. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like they're going to fuck. That's why he's got such a strong relationship with yes. Stephen Crichton and able to get Stephen Crichton right because you know, he built that relationship and I can from the ground see, up. And I can see it now. Yeah, you know, like he he genuinely cares, and we've got to, and there's a coaching staff there that genuinely cares about the players. And we're in the, there's no egos in the coaching staff. We're not here trying to backstab each other. And, oh, I'm the first grade coach. No, fuck that. I just want to help the club get to a place where it belongs. Yeah. In the top four and help these kids become better humans, better players. Give them all the knowledge I can, and just see where we go. Yep. And then there's no and there's no egos at all. There's 100%. nothing like when I, I've seen. I've, I've been in some fucking coaching systems <laughs> when there's a fucking assistant coach, death riding the fucking first grade coach. <laughs> 
and there's yeah. none of that shit. Yeah, I've seen that you before fucking, myself. Yeah, you've seen it as well. Yeah. And you're just like, you piece of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm getting told by the, 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 the head coach this, and then he's doing this going, no, he doesn't know this. Fuck, please. I said, you wake up. <laughs> All right, circling back, just finishing off. A couple of little tangents. Bring it back to Jack Bird is 100%. Bro, brother, you can Bird. love He's Jack Bird. Fucking animal. You're out there. You're uh, you're ripping in for hook. Okay, OG, we are gonna be joining the entourage. We're talking about Cam Munster's entourage, Levels Network, Levels Podcast. So if you listen to this on YouTube or Apple, Apple, Spotify, all of the social media platforms, go over on Instagram because we are gonna be collaborating with him, right? So we are gonna be collaborating for a chance to join Cam Munster's entourage. Tickets are going sale this Sunday for a chance to join that entourage. Right. A part of the perks are receiving a trading card, access to a group chat, there's gonna be meet and greets throughout the year. A couple of them are gonna be race days, even golf. So if you wanna join Cam Munster's entourage, we at Levels are giving away all right, well. One ticket. One so ticket. there's going to be limited numbers. So it's going to be one ticket to join a Cam Munster's uh, entourage. So what you need to do, you need to tag a mate and make sure you are following Levels Network, Munster's page, obviously, and Entourage because we're going to be collaborating with them on Instagram. And make sure you like and subscribe Levels Network. All That's right. a big part of it. Well, let me um, – I'm going to see how, how serious Cam Munster is about, you know, yeah. how about his entourage people. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna donate or I'm gonna put in a uh, signed New South Wales Origin jersey from me back in the day. Yes. I, wanna, I just want to see if Cam Munster's serious about his entourage. Oh. I'll just throw it out to him. See if he wants to see if he wants to throw in a signed uh, That's or, Origin time. jersey. So, you know what? It'd be something something good to win for the for the punters. Well, make sure you like and subscribe. Do all that kind of stuff. All right. Get the entourage going. So, so up for a you, chance, money. It's up to for you, a money. chance, it's up to you, money, money. It's on the prez. It's on you, baby. A free ticket to Cam Munster's uh, entourage to be a part of the, all these things that are going to happen throughout the year. Plus, OG is challenging the prez to match him with an origin jersey because he's going to put one up himself. So It's not even my entourage. It's not even, it's not even my entourage. <laughs> you know, I'm doing this. Come on, bro. Oh, we're not, we don't even have Turtle here yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, what a great prize. Um, make sure you do all those things. The following, tag a mate. Make sure you're following levels. Like him, subscribe. Go on our networks. We'll, we'll find you. Yeah. And uh, But apart from that, all right, AG, now let's roll into round 11 preview. Just want to give you a heads up that these are accurate as of May 7.30 p.m. from our friends, our partners, The Tab. The first game is Melbourne, The Prez. Against the Brisbane Broncos. They are $1.67 favourites, OG, the Melbourne what? Storm. $2.20 underdogs, the Bronx. I think there's a little bit of jam. I don't, look, what, what, why? Why? Before, What's happening? Before we head to that, I don't know. I'm with you. I'm, I'm, well, I guess a lot of people know where we're going straight away. The Lions plus three and a half uh, for the Broncos. Minus three and a half, $1.90 for the Melbourne Storm. Craig Bellamy is named the same 17 that has lost to Rabbitohs on Magic Round. George Jennings, Alec McDonald, uh, at least another week away. Tui is uh, another week away from suspension. Um, despite sustaining a head knock late in the win over Manly, Kurt Capewell was good to go. So no changes as well for the Broncos. Oh, my God. I feel like you found yourself a little bit of overs there in the Bronx. What's happening there? I can't believe that. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, mate, I'm, Payne Haas, mate, he was out uh, – he, he's the difference. He is the difference. Like last oh, week, what he did was just – he destroys forward packs. He's easily the best front rower in the world. Can big, easily. Can Big Nasty cancel him out in this? No. No? No. <laughs> no, Big Nasty. Big Nasty's got the biggest job. He's got to go He's got to go at him. And I just don't think – Payne Haas is that sort of player. He does not give a shit who you are and who – you're in front of him, he's running at you. He doesn't care. Yeah. And he's running flat out. So Nas has got a massive job. And he plays, and he doesn't. His, his last hit up is as about as powerful as his first one. Yeah, you the Broncos. I mean? He's the, fit as hell. The Storm have had uh, a run over the Broncos now for a couple of years, but well, then that must be why why they're favourites. Yeah, this is a different Broncos team, right? Totally different, mate. Par Carrigan, look at their bench, even you know, like Marty Tupau's going good. Corey Pay, Corey Jensen, Hetherington hits like a truck. Mm. He comes on zero hit ups. 30 tackles, <laughs> no fucking misses. He's like, oh, mate, he just hits like a truck. Mate, uh, Reese, 
Fucking Reese Walsh, you know, Herbie Farmer, Stags, Arthurs. We saw Arthurs, didn't we? Yeah, just the other shout out to what Jesse. What a great kid. Selwyn Cobbo. Bro, come mm. on, man. I reckon this is going to be a touch up. Mm. Touch up? It's going to be a touch up. I don't mm. think it's going to be close. I'm with you. I, I don't I, think it's going to be close. Andrew Mam, like this. I like the plus three and a half about the Broncos as well. Adam I mean, Reynolds, we saw a little plus Reynolds, three and a half is Jen. Reynolds on the weekend as well. Like yep. the Flegler, Jersey Flegler, he's fucking killing it. Jersey <laughs> I just don't think they have the depth there. Big game players, Cam Munster, yeah, our boy, mate, the entourage. I know. I know like, is he like, capable of pulling one of those no, performances? Not against these guys. If it was, if it was someone else, apart from the Broncos, I just think, I just think the Broncos are on that on that run, mate. They're just hard to beat. They got the per, they, they got the most perfectly balanced team in the comp. Yeah, and I think this will be a game where, like, you know what? Don't fucking doubt us. We're, yeah. the real, we're the real deal. I agree with that. We're I think this deal. is an opportunity, right? So two weeks ago, the Broncos got dusted by the Rabbitohs with with Payne Haas and Ezra Mam out, right? Yeah. So those are, those are, so they had two really big question marks. The next week, the Rabbitohs go on and they dust uh, the, the Storm. So if Broncos can put in a decent performance and – I don't even know. They don't have to flog them, but they have to do it convincingly. Nah, it'll be convincing. It, 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 should it could be, be ten points, but you're like, you, you, you never really doubt Broncos are going to get the job done. But I mean, like they've proved this wrong a lot, Melbourne. But they, I just don't think they have. They're not that. capable they're of this not, occasion. They're not that team anymore. They've right. had a few hiccups this year that you're like, yeah, they're sort of normal. They're not as dominant as they used to be. Still dominant. Still dom. Still a top eight team. And this game, obviously, it's always it's always a great game, but. Come on, man. That's this is a great test for their credentials for me, Broncos. Soccer Solomona, Welsh, Payne Haas, Flegler. You know, but look at the back row. Capewell, Ricky, Carrigan, they're all playing unbelievable. Josh King, good worker. Elisa Katoa, yeah, he's going all right. Liero, not too bad, but they're very, very, very one-dimensional. Mm. Josh King's going to go out there and make 45 tackles. Do a lot of work. Elisa Katoa, if he, you, know, you can shut him down on an edge. Yep. You can shut all these players down. You got to look after Big Nasty. Big yep. Nasty's there. He's the, he's their spiritual leader. He's their fucking man now. Rabbitohs you know, did a good job on him last week, and it's yes. sort of just everything else because he come on and just destroyed the Warriors in yeah. that second in that stint st- off the bench yeah, the week it's a before. Different pack, but isn't it? Mm. Look, Flegler's got great tackle tech. So does fucking Carrigan and Payne Haas hits. So it's a different. You know what I mean? Like they hit and they're very effective. He's going to be trying to spot up Billy Walters. That's all he's going to do. Yeah, he's going to try and get at him. But you know it's easier said than done. Yeah, you know, you, it's got you some don't, big boys around. You got to get. You got to get to those. When, when you say spot, you got to get. Sometimes you got to get to that spot, and he might not be there. You know what's an underrated part of you know now that you say this too, Payne Haas and Billy Walters is a fair defender for a hooker. But you know at the end of the day, when you be, when, job. when you're a hooker, you you get spotted. A part of Payne Haas's Payne Haas's game that he doesn't really get the raps for is. Obviously, his defense and engine and protecting people Bro. because he works so hard in defense. You don't really get to spot up Billy he's, Walters. He's you don't really see it. Ninety-five percent effective tackler. Unbelievable. Ninety-five percent. If you're over like you know high eighties, you're mm. going all right. Ninety-five percent, and he's seventy minutes plus. Yeah, it's fucking huge. It's people a lot don't of work. Understand that people just look at how destructive he is with, with the, ball, the ball. With the ball, you know what I mean. Forget like about he's, the defense. He's outstanding. He's the if he can develop a pass, which I don't really think he it has to at no. the moment, no. that'll come in a couple of years. Yeah, and I don't think he's really coached that well. But if he develops a pass and if he, he can go out the back, all that kind of stuff. But Carrigan does that a lot, and he's the lead guy for Carrigan all yep. the time. So he brings those. He really gets the the C man involved, and that's why they always get him on the left edge yep. most of the time. But get a like, quick play, the ball and roll. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, mate, he's, he's, he's got it all. He's the best prop in the world. So nice, easy one. We both like the Broncos, 220, yeah, and we both you, like the start plus. Oh, I'm with you. When I when I like, when like it come up, I thought at best a coin flip. So generous again from our partners, the tab looking after the punters. The back, so the back line, but responsible. The back line's – it's decent. Yeah. But Nick Meaney and Warbrick really put it back. I just think – Warbrick's for, sort of like he's finding how hard NRL is. I, I just think it comes back to pain. And Nick Meaney – I don't like. I, don't I, I think I think the lineups are pretty even across the board, except for Payne. Yeah, but Nick Nick, Nick Meaney's had some really good games mm. against some some low competition. Mm. Big see, test. Yep. See how he goes when there's twelve of these blokes running down. All right, we will see.
All right, the first game of that is Thursday night. The first game of Friday night is your dogs, Mace, Ooh. against the Waz, the Warriors. Waz. You are $1.95 underdogs at home. It's a coin flip again, this one. $1.85 about the Warriors. You can get plus one and a half start at $1.85 about the Bulldogs and minus one and a half for $1.95 with our friends from the tab. Uh, the dogs get a huge boost as Josh Adekar returns to the lineup, Mace. Uh, hopeful to play his way into an origin jersey. That's big news. He'll take Declan Casey's spot. Uh, Jackson Ford and Edward Cossey both su- suffered injuries last week. Mudders Curran moves from the bench into the second row. Rocco Berry will get his first start of the year, I believe, in place of Marcelo Montoya, who shifts to the wing. Ronald Volkman is into play 5-8 with, with Dylan Walker to come off the bench. So, fair few changes yeah. there for the Waz. Mace, how are the boys yeah, the sort boys. of feeling for this week after a... Bit of a deflating, bit of a deflating loss against the Raiders. They just, it's, it's. We've been starting really well. Mm. We're in the top. We're in the top five of starting of, of um in the first twenty minutes of putting points on. Yeah, like just we, finishing yeah. them off. Then it's a problem. Yeah, like yeah. We, we seem to go to sleep for about ten or fifteen minutes, which are costing us games. That's that's it. But and but it depends where that ten or fifteen minutes is. Yeah, you do. You have it real bad be, momentum. Yes, uh, it, could be, it could be. It could it could be like the ten or fifteen minutes before halftime. It could be like from twenty onwards, or it could be the second half. You know, the Sharks it, game yeah. started awful for twenty. Yes. Come back, we fought come hard back, for fifteen. We've got some fucking then balls. We've got awful again grit. after second yeah, half, man. and then fought back again. You know, and we're we're just finding our identity still. I think we found it against St George. We're fucking tough. We're gritty. Well coached. That was your best 80 against yes. the Dragons, for and, sure. And we're fucking tough. I mean, the Fox is coming back. F- fucking credit to him and Jacob Carraz. Mm. Jacob Carraz had a grade two medial. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The like, boys are playing tough. Um, they are tough. And the thing is, what I love is that they want to play. Yeah. He, I think Ado Car could probably have another one or two weeks off. Yeah, but they if, want to be part of it. To, but he wants to be part of it. He knows how important he is to the squad. He's such a, vo- he's such a vocal... Character, but a great player. The Fox is a fucking gun. You know what I mean? People I don't understand. People get, get it twisted with he's like, you know, he's a bit of a character and he laughs and all that shit. Dude, kid can play. All right, big he's one. Origin. Daniel Tupe's out. Joseph Swali's form it hasn't been the greatest. There's been chat about Campbell Graham potentially playing on the wing, but now there's chat around Campbell Graham playing centers potentially. Stephen Crichton. If Fox puts together a good couple oh, of games. If, if Fox if Fox can um be the fox that he was at the start of the year. I don't think there should be any problem with him playing Origin. Yeah, you know, like he's like the, th- the three years he played Origin, he scored ten tries. Mm. Ten tries. In he's three a big years. game player. He's a big game player, mate, and he's and he loves that whole. He loves it. He's in there with his with the brothers. You know what I mean? Like you know, his Latrell's in there. I remember seeing him fucking. They were rooming together up in Townsville. Rolled in there. They just fucking. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> just just a good vibe. Max King. Shout out to Max King. He was supposed to be out for four or five weeks. He did his sternum. He broke his sternum mm. against Parramatta. Yeah. Played the next week. They're the awful. Then, oh, the Jason I've Burnham. Done. The Jason Burnham's <laughs> terrible. So he he was out. He was supposed to be out for four or five weeks. He just went, fuck it. I want to be back. Yeah. So he played last week. Now he's playing this week. I, 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 got, I got a fractured sternum back in the day. It's and that terrible. Sh- that shit is the worst. Mm. That, I got it in under 20s. That shit doesn't leave you all year. So nah. what a tough So he's, he's tough, mate. Oluwapu is still there, Ockenbore, big Franklin Pele. I'm just glad that that big boy's back. Yeah. He could be a pain Haas. He just needs the runs on the board. Exactly. Yeah. He just needs the runs on the board. He's been hampered he by some, injuries. Yeah. You know he needs I mean? minutes. Like he had a bit of an off, off preseason. He was in and out. He had a few issues. But he sorted all that out. Can you, can you, can you, can you just tell just, can you just tell the big fella? He's off the back fence every time. He Ooh. just needs to save just a touch of energy, right? No, he, he can't. It's not he possible. Can't do that, mate. He can't. There's, there's no, there's no head Every break. run's like he's going to run through the line That's like the fucking like uh, shout out to Pelliasino who yeah. follows it. Big, big Fex. He, he loves Levels Network. It's like him back in the day, bro. Yeah. Every carry is like it's his last, which you love, but you sort of just need to save a little bit of energy yeah, as well. He doesn't. He just doesn't. He just needs to find his legs. And it's, and it's as I said, it's different coming off the bench. Yeah. You, know you got to make like, an impact, right? Got, but he's got that. Like sometimes I think, fuck, start him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then he he can go. He can like sort of just build into the game. Empty the tank. The Empty, Empty the, the tank. tank get have 20, a break. Twenty minutes. I'll like start him and him and um, mm. uh, Pangai. Yeah. Just yeah. fucking let him go. <laughs> just destroy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But like, I'm I'm happy he's 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 back in the team. I just want him to string string about six or seven games together. Yeah. And he'll be outstanding towards the back end. He just needs to string those games together. But they've um they've had a good week. It's a, it's a short turnaround again. Yeah. Um, is it short? 
Was they playing? Yeah, pretty. They played, well, they played Friday, Friday night. Friday, 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 Friday. They've got a week. They've, they've had a. But they've had a, um. They've had some. Don't, don't say rounds. that to the Warriors fans, mate, because the Warriors fans. No, they've had the. Seriously. They've had the run of doom. <laughs> so that's the run. They're, they're the ones I was talking about. They've, they've, they've had a, in eleven days. They had three games, and now a quick little turnaround. Surely the Warriors are going to get some love. So their main, their their main guys, you know, like Sean Johnson for Neil Blake. Yep. You know what I mean? They're they're outstanding. They're one of some of the best in their positions. Like Sean right this year on care. form. Yep, hundred yeah. percent. For Neil Blake, I think I'm looking forward to the battle with um, Pangai. And yeah, for Neil Blake. Yeah, they'll go at it. They, they will. Take, they take it personally. They will. Tongans, bro. Yeah, it gets tribal. Yeah, and uh, you know even Bunty Afoa. You know you got uh, Raymond Fatala Mariner, yeah. Samoan boy. Yeah, the Island boys it's are going to go after it's it. Going to go at it. Al- Alamotti, Tongan. Um, Hayes Perham, Kiwi boy. Yep. Mount Moldy boy. So, you know, it always, Bulldogs and Warriors, regardless. It's going to be a good always, game. Gets tribal, they always go hard. All right, I'm on the Bulldogs, $1.95. I'll take the nice. plus one and a half nice. as well. It's a, For me, this is a coin flip. The Bulldogs are at home. I'm leaning towards the Dogs. All right, second game, Penrith versus the Sydney Roosters. The Penrith are $1.48. Ooh. And the Roosters, $2.65 underdogs, OG. All right, so the line is minus five and a half, so it's been pumped into $1.85 with our friends at the tab. So people are coming for the Panthers. Oh. And the Roosters are plus five and a half. That's so a I don't good team. I don't mind that plus I'm, five I'm, and a half. I'm going the Roosters. Okay. I'm going the Roosters. I just think they're going to be so pissed off. The culture that they've set there, they know how good they are. They were off last week. All this noise, surrounding All the noise. noise. Don't fucking hey, this team, this team's built for games like this. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going for the Roosters. Okay. So for the Panthers, the same 17 that defeated the Warriors have been named here. Liam Martin is getting close but not back just yet. Sam Walker has again been named in the reserves with Joey Manu and Luke Keary steering the line. Egan Butcher will miss a game due to a concussion and Angus Crichton comes in in his place. So pretty fair replacement there. I'm with you, OG. I think yeah. this is a – Bit of a statement it's game. A statement. For the it's, it's, game. This is the shut the fuck up game. Yeah. To everyone. Yeah. Who are you, who are you down? Who are you talking you. to? I'm with you. Like who are you talking to? Like mm. you know, look at that team. Look, Tedesco, Corey Allen, Suali, Smith, Paulo, Manu, Kiri, Hargrave, Smith, Collins, Crichton, Butcher, Radley, Hutchison, Baker, Tupanua, Lodge. Good it's fucking top going team. at it, mate. I think this is why where the frustration comes in, right? Because if you're a Roosters fan, you look at that lineup. They've been underperforming. So, uh, you know, you feel that when you're in a playing group of that stature. Yeah. So I'm looking for a ba- – I, I love the plus five and they a half of the tab, $1.95. They know they're – they know they're Teddy's frustrated. Yeah. I've seen it in the press. He's frustrated you know, And so is Victor Radley. Um, you know, they're trying to blame – you know, so we'll, they're like, no, we're all playing bad. Yeah. We're all playing bad. Yeah. Um, you know, so this is, this is the game where they're like, you know what, you want to doubt us? Let's see. And this this would be this will be tight. I remember this game tight. last right. year. Uh the Roosters were playing and they were a little bit lost. Um around the same point of the year, they might have played in and around um anywhere between round ten to fifteen. I think they really figured themselves out figured themselves out last year, started playing more direct through the middle. Mm. And I believe because Penrith's middles are so strong and yeah. they've got such a strong reputation that people go away from it. I think you have to keep persisting at it and keep trying to attack them because when you don't attack the middle, you start going sideways yeah. and they love that. Yeah. Penrith love dra- it. They drag out, pick you out more. They do. They out. clip you off. So that's what I mean. Well, look at your, look at your props. Lindsay Collins and Hargraves and Smith. Got to they're go going, they're, going, they're going at it. They Joe Manu through the middle. It. They're going at Leota. They're going at Fisher-Harris. It's going to be it's, – it's, it's, it's going to be, be bang fest. We want, Brandon, we want Brandon Smith running out, creating havoc. That's what they want. Crichton, that butcher, Victor Radley, ball playing through the middle. Isaiah Yo is exactly the same. So yep. Victor will be taking that personal against Isaiah Yo. Yep, you know, like for sure. I still think Victor's one of the top three locks in the game. But Yo is the premier. Isaiah, Isaiah Yo is that dude. He's that guy. Um, you got Cam Murray, then you got Victor Radley. Yep. So that's a good matchup. I just actually. think I, I like th- that thirteen think, matchup. I think there's you can expose them a little bit on the edge. You know, but you've got to go through the middle. You've yep. got to go through them. They're so hard to beat Penrith. Yep. They don't fucking make mistakes. And then you've got crazy bastards like Spencer Lienu coming off the bench. Mm. He's, that's good. That's a good shout. But you've got Spencer's going to be pumped for this but one. You've got Tupanua. You've got Lodge. Hey, so let's go, let's go back to Spencer. And Spencer's just been given a big contract to go mm. to the Roosters. Lodge apparently is looking, he's, he's going to be the casualty because of that. Yep. Lodge comes on at the same time as They'll Spencer. Be going at it. They'll there be going go. at it. And I don't think Spencer is scared of anyone. Either is Lodgy. Anyone. They're, they're not taking a back step. Yeah, those but two. I, I think I – th- 
I think Leandu's got that. He's, he's just a little bit smaller. Not yeah. small, little, but n- more pe- little got that more stature. Power. And yeah. I'll just come back from injury. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just, yeah. and I Couple think of games he's, now. he's in his prime, Leandu. Optimus. Yes, he's Optimus at the moment. Um, yeah, this would be a great, great yeah. game. Yeah. Great game. Can't wait. All right. The first game of Super Saturday, moving on to the South Sydney Rabbitohs against the West Tigers. The odds are brought to you by Tab. As per, obviously, the Souths are heavy favourites here, OG, $1.15. The West Tigers are $5.50. The start is plus 15.5. So you can get the start for the Tigers at plus 15.5 at $1.95. Therefore, People who have been smashing minus 15 half. They think it's going to be way more than that, Mace. More than 16 points. So you get dollar eighty-five. The Rabbitohs have announced no changes. That's been a big part of their success over the last couple of weeks. Keeping a relatively fit, in particular in the middles and firing middles. Um, and after being a late withdrawal last Sunday, Johnny Beatman returns, which forces Asu Kapoa back to the bench. Mm. Other than that, the Tigers are exactly the same as well. Looking for their third straight victory, OG. Fuck. Not going to happen against South. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I just I just think the South are just on a roll. They're on a tear. They're playing they're playing some great football. If you're going on form now, they they should win the comp, right? Things can change. They're the team to Things beat. Things can change. They're I will say the, that. They're, playing, they're the team they're, to beat. Yes, yes. But I'm, I'm, it's round 11. Yeah. But they go on runs like this. Mm. They can go on runs like this and then they can lose about two or three in a row and everyone just goes, oh, they're not the same team. But then they'll, they'll end up catching back at the back end. They're playing some good football. It's very well balanced because what's been happening in the last couple of years, they don't have it. They never had a right side. Mm. It was always left. Yeah. So that always, so defenses would always stack their right side. You can't do it now. You're I'm not doing it now, mate. Mm. So when you when you just at the right side of the post, when you're looking for a, a six four, yeah, you're keeping four there. You've got to keep you're that full back. You're not flipping soft that, A. You're not flipping that bloke. You're not flipping the short side because they're going to go down there, mm. and they're going to be yeah, like fucking, he's on fire. They. Fucking centre, Campbell Graham. Campbell Graham. got to be in origin. We'll see now. So obviously AJ got, got a couple of pieces of meat and I, was, I think Isaiah Tass scored one as well. That looks so, sharp on that left. Because you know why? Everyone was dominating that side. Now they're starting to shift some weight to the right and then obviously now the left has some joy. And then you've got Latrell, Cookie, Cam Murray through the middle. Yeah, but- Tommy Burgess coming off the bench. Very hard to stop. The Tigers got a massive, massive job in front of them. What? I think this is a, a comeback to reality game for what the Tigers. Do, yes, reality check. What do you do when um, Kaloa Matungi comes back and how dangerous they're going to be on that right mm. edge? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. What, what, what sort of injury did he do? Um, I think he did something around his ankle. Was it an ankle Luke, can you can you Google what happened to Kaloa Matungi for you? Something, uh, something like that, yeah. Um, so he'll come back like – yeah, he's. he's I, I don't think he's that far away because there was chat about him potentially getting back for Origin. I know he's in a boot at one point as well. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the uh, syndesmosis. Uh, and then he's like, he's a bit. He'll be a big in. He'll be a big in. He because he was he was on trajectory to be like part of Origin conversation. At least on the bench. Mm. At least I would have had him on the bench. Him yeah. Kalama uh, um, Olukwatu. Olukwatu. Could here, here we go. Hey mate, syndesmosis. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the Tigers a chance. No. But not at all. No. Yeah, I think so. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought you did there for a little bit. Well, I, I think I think maybe the punters will be looking at the fifteen and a half. I still think that's no chance as well. Uh, I think Rabbitohs, they're 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 a bit of a bully team as well. They're not a te- they're not they're not a team mate. that's going to drop down the Tigers level and go. No, no, no. Um, the standards yeah, are always high. Yeah, they they're going to find they're going to do it early and often. They're going to have to be really really off their game because guys like Tavita Totola and see what's happening right now is that they know they've got some players coming back, so they're forwards. Mm. So like Tom Burgess, he wants to start. I know he's playing good off the bench. Mm. Jai Arrow wants to start as well. Mm. You know? But that puts pressure on Jame Sele and Totola to play well and cheek him to play well so when to, when uh, Kaloa Matangi comes back, they're still in the 17 mm. because you know you're, you know you're, you're, you know you're in a good team, you want to be part of it. You want to be part of so it. Yeah. It could said, be something iron special. Iron sharpens iron and you don't – and that's why they're playing at such a high level, everybody in that forward pack mm. because you don't want to lose your spot. So that's why like, you know, Totola is going to be playing outstanding because he's been injured most of the year. Hame Sele's forced himself into the starting lineup, putting Jai Arrow back there. They're solid players that don't often get the raps for the – so they, it's almost – it's the perfect balance, right? You've got so many stars in that team that 
in a game like this where you could be expected to drop down to the level, mm-hmm. and not and Tigers won two in a row and they're playing good for you. Don't get me wrong, but they are a drop. They are there are levels to this shit, and they're and they're a couple of tiers below. But when you got players like Totola, Hamasele, um, Joy Arrows had raps in the past where they don't get the raps, so they're always playing Jacob with a chip Host on their shoulder too. Good. Yeah, Host Jacob is playing Host. good. Chi, our boy Lee, Chi, Liam Knight. Yeah, he's only just come back, so he wants to keep his spot. Yep. So these guys are playing for the you know they want to be involved in semi-finals, they want to be involved in a grand final, they want to win it. So like that's that's exactly why they're playing at such a high level. Like Jacob Hodges is playing outstanding. Chi games force his way in f- yeah. into the fucking starting lineup. Yeah, Chi. I love the Chi. I love the Chi. You know, so this could be this could be a touch up. South touch up dollar fifteen head to head, and I like the minus fifteen and a half. Mm. Moving on to the second game of Super Saturday, North Queensland versus the St. George Illawarra Dragons. The Cowboys are $1.47. Are they back? Are they back? Are they back? Our friends at the Tab, sponsored by the Tab, the Cowboys. Shout out to them for the content that they did for the Tab as well. The Dragons, therefore, are $2.70 underdogs. The line is 6.5, so you can get that at $1.90 either way. Minus 6.5 about the Cowboys, plus 6.5 about the Dragons. uh, Coach Todd Payton has named the same 17, obviously, after beating the Roosters. Coach Anthony Griffin, which we spoke about at length at the start of the show, is sticking with the same 17. Zach Lomax still out of the 22, so he's not mm. even part of the 22. Jeez. Skipper Ben Hunt starts again at halfback in his 300th NRL game. 300. Shout out to God, Hunty. What well a great done, achievement, mate. Well mate. done. Um, therefore, Moses Mboy remains at hooker uh, like he started last week and Jada Sullivan's on the bench again. So it'll be interesting to see if there's a little bit of a shuffle maybe before game or that's how it starts out Question. again. Bad Roosters or good Cowboys last week? Good Cowboys. Admit, good Cowboys. I'm yeah. giving the Cowboys. I thought, I thought they played well. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the conditions obviously helped because the Cowboys went after it and they like were desperate and therefore played the conditions a lot better. The forwards uh, ran hard, And man. Ruben Roosters Potter, didn't play well at all, Jordan but I think – McLean, Cohen Hess, they ran hard. They haven't been running hard for like six weeks. Mm. Um, they've been on the back foot most of the time. I know, I know they're missing Tal Malolo a little bit. Ruben Cottle was out for a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I thought Tanua, Tanua, Luke is back. Tanua Brown played pretty aggressive. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go past uh, the Cowboys on this. But, you know, Val Holmes played good. Pat Hercu played good. They've been down a little mm, bit. So, yeah. um, Pet's been down. Could, Pet's had yeah, a down Pet, year. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm outstanding last year. Yeah. I love Pet's one. Pet's my boy, so I'm, I'm, I'm harsh on Pet. Like he's had a down year, but he's starting to get it together the last couple of weeks. You can tell when he's, he's he's a little bit of a mutters at the moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he looked fit as fuck last year, yeah. and you could tell that he's playing his best football. Yeah, stay out of the mad cow and the red fan, and the orange Fanta. Tom Dearden. loves his Fanta. dearden has been um he's been best. he's been their best all year. Tommy Dearden. chance for Origin. Yeah, big time, big time. Oh, yeah. Like he'll be in, he'll he'll be, he'll be that next if something happens to Prez, um, if something happens to oh, because then you're Walsh as well. I told you we had this problem yeah. last week. Yeah, what are we when are we going to pick our origins a couple of weeks later? Yeah, we'll be in now, late. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll be there. Um, up at up at North Queensland, you'd think they'd yeah like to back it up with a big performance. I am a little bit scared of Benton Hunt's three hundredth. He does so much for that club that they yeah. can they lift for him. But in saying that, if they haven't lifted for him, no. Nah. In it previous in previous weeks, it won't, it won't happen. It won't happen. It'll be sad if fucking Hook. This if if the Dragons lose this, this is fucking Benny Hunt's three hundred game and Hook gets the get, hook. Gets the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you bring in, but? Well, the big chats Who's around. It? It's it's around Jason Rolls, and they've Rolsey? had a. I think they've had an informal conversation with him. Is the is the news? I want to see. I want to see Rollsy be. I want to see him like you know he's been involved in some really great clubs. Being the assistant, done his apprenticeship. Being, he's, he's done the apprenticeship for five or six years now. Is it time for him to big challenge? Big take big it on challenge. You know, because you got a guy called Des Hasler in the mm. wings there who mm. would gladly take that spot. And what Des is good at is fucking creating and just starting clubs, mm. and getting them off to a great fucking start. You know what I mean? Sorting all the shit out and get. You well, know he cuts mean? all the shit out from above. Yes. You know, Ken James. No Ross, communication. Ken Ross, you do that. Zero yeah. communication. <laughs> I'm just doing it. Yeah. Give me all your money and shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. So to start to 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 restart a club, you'd go with Des. Mm. But if Rollsy wants it. Well, it's, apparently it's, it seems to be if it's Do um, you go with a rookie? If coach? he wants it, it's Rolls' job. Go with the well, I think they'd love to have him. I think they'd love to have him. Done Melbourne Storm Roosters. Uh, he's a what Illawarra Junior Rollsy? Yeah, yeah. 
Because I know he come through um, the Dragons, so great guy, love Rosie. I think I'd have him in a heartbeat. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the Cowboys. Oh, cows all day. We put a line through them last week, mate. We're back on after one performance. <laughs> we are, aren't we? <laughs> We're back. Fuck. I think, I think I might have to take the six and a half start about the Dragons though, because just cover myself for a little bit of Ben Hunt three hundredth yeah, right. game magic. Um, yeah. So let's move on. Cam- Canberra Raiders versus the Parramatta this- Eels. This will be good. This will be a good game, eh? Good game. Yeah, Canberra versus Parramatta down at Canberra. Canberra a seventy favourite with our friends from the Tab OG. Mm. $2.15 about the Parramatta Eels, therefore. Oh, Obviously off the back of Mitch Moses is out for, oh, a, he's out. for okay. a week. Oh, so, my God. It's Jake Arthur. Plus two and a half. Jake Arthur's half. They're going to get fucking smashed. My, <laughs> minus two and a half about the Raiders. Albert Hoppawadi returns on the wing for Xavier Savage. Who's dropped to 18th man? That's an interesting one for me too, OG. Jake Arthur takes over at halfback from Mitchell Moses, who is due out to the mandatory 11 day concussion protocol. Um, yeah, simply because Jake Arthur's halfback. Not a, fan of, not, a, not a fan of Jake. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, I just don't think he's up to scratch for first grade. He hasn't played all year. Mm. He's been like part of the extended squad every time. He's playing reserve grade. He's like, he's, he's been he's been he's been carving up reserve grade. Yeah, but it's fucking reserve grade. Mm. I could play reserve grade. Yeah, now. Yeah, right now. Off the street, right yeah, now. Go right get, now. Go get changed. Give me some boots and I'll go carve it up. <laughs> um, but Canberra are fucking mm. good. They're, they're playing well. Four in a row. They're tough. Four in a row. They're on a roll. Um, the horse bra. The horse was fucking Huddy Young, Jackie he's White. A chance for, he's a cha- big chance. He's a genuine chance for Origin. Big chance. I if think he, he'll be a part of the extended squad, and he deserves that. Yeah. And if that's his career highlight, he'll be fucking stoked. But, yeah, fuck, um, that's a great highlight that's a for a lot massive of people. Thing, I think he, mate, I think he'll play it at some point in the some, series because injuries built, happen. He's built for Origin. Injuries happen. He's built for Origin. Yeah, he just doesn't fucking stop. Um, Mate, I like uh, I like Emre Gula. I like him. Is Xavier Savage getting dropped, mate? I don't understand that. Yeah, for Albert Hopperwadi because well, now is a bit of a loyalty there. Oh. Because did did, well, Hop, did Hopper 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 miss a game because of injury? He must have. Well, then it is loyalty. Yeah, and that's well done from Sticky. Um, Papa, Papa but Lee, it's, Xavier Savage is there supposed to be the next fucking gun. Yeah, but he needs he's a fullback. Yeah, but what do you do? Sebastian Chris? No disrespect, is not a fullback. But He's doing a great do you, job. But you don't. You can't take Croker and you can't take Tomoko because they're mm. both killing it. Mm. You know, so it's it's a good problem to have because if you get an injury, like I think, you know, you can, I think Savage is an X I think I'm, I'm putting Savage. He's got so he's got four forwards, right? Keep it. No, keep Savage on the wing. Albert Hopperwadi just he's he's next. You know, like I've I've seen enough of Albert Hopperwadi. He's, he's solid winger, mm. but I think Savage has got X factor. It's in the name. Oh, right? mate. I agree. I agree. I reckon Dill Brown's going to have a real big game. He's been playing really good the last he's couple of weeks. Out, he's been outstanding. And he he's sort of takes the reins now that gonna Moses is out. He's going to have to do it all. You know, if he's going, who's he going up against? Um, so Fogarty be on that side. He's a good defender. Yep, Fogarty. Good defender. Fogarty, Jack, that back Jack. Um, Jackie plays on the left. And then you've got the right side back row. You've got Hudson Young there. I mean, yeah, Hudson, Hudson Young? Or? Yep, Huddy Young. So he, Huddy Young's on the left, so he'll be going so up against. So Whitehead will be up against Lane. Yep. Is that right? Yep. And Huddy Young's on the left gun gun up against been making, Brad Arthur and uh been making mistakes defensively, Elliot Whitehead. Mm. So they'll be going at they'll be going at that um that edge. Hudson Young's a gun. I like him. Um he can play some origin at some point, eh? Hudson Young. Yeah, he's, he's one of those players that just on the edge all the time. Yeah, but like, you know, does he play fourteen or does he play eleven? You know, you got we've got mm. some good back roles there. So like, I thought he would have got picked for the kangaroo tour last mm. year. But Nico Hines didn't even get picked. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going with Canberra here. Who are you going? <laughs> you don't I'm going to go Para. All right. Yeah, I, th- I think, um, I think, I think Dill Brown's going to have a big game, and uh, I feel like this is a game that I like Para when they when they're underdogs. I don't like I don't like getting on Para when they're favourites. Yeah. So give me give me the give me the eels at two fifteen because played, if Moses played, I'll be I'll be. Busy. I think Jakey be, can do a solid enough job. I'm I'm yeah. not I'm not as down on on Jakey as you. I think he can fill in. He he's he's like a bit, a bit of a Sean Sean O'Sullivan sort of half. Come in, kick the corners, all that sort of shit. I think when he come in a couple of years ago, can't he can't try to be Mitch Moses? Obviously, I think defensively is where he gets found. Yeah, out. he's not a good defender. Mm. All right, give me the eels. I'll take the plus two and a half for sure about the eels in a close one because. 
Canberra capable of taking it all the way to the wire in their performances mm. as well. So give They'll me the make Eels. it ugly too. Yeah, I think it'll be ugly. All right, first game of Sunday, Newcastle Knights at home to the Gold Coast Titans at 2 o'clock. It's a legit a coin flip, both $1.90, $1.90, well, but you can get um, – That's disrespectful pl- to the Titans. Plus – yeah, I know. Where, I know where you're going with that. The line is plus one and a half about the Newcastle Knights. If you want to take that, it's because they're coming off the bye. Marcus off the Marcus straight off the Marcus, um, and minus one and a half with our friends at the tab for the Gold Coast Titans at two dollars. Kurt Mann is out with an abdominal injury, therefore Phoenix Crossland goes in to start hooker, and Adam. Elliott returns from his first game back from round one. Cruz Lemon comes onto the bench for the young gun, Keno Kinney, who goes back to 18th man. Jaden Campbell is again at fullback with Brimo still out with that hamstring. OG. Whoever's playing on that right, who's right three? Yeah. Is it Kalen or is it Hastings? Uh, Hastings is right edge. Because you're fucking looking after David Fafita all day. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. He's on a tear and he's going to destroy you. With his little and mate Fozzie. Gonna, yeah, Fozzie's going to get him one-on-ones. And Camp Herrera. Yep. He's going to get him one-on-one and mm. he's going to fucking terrorise Jackson Hastings. Mm. And that, that'll that be their plan. They're going to go through the middle, Fodawaka, Tino. Like they, I mean, like, I think, you know, Saifidi's is a good prop, Leo Thompson, but, you know, there's, Tino le- there's levels. Like Joe Sims has been going good, Isaac Liu. They've, they've been really – they're playing some good football. You're not worried about the Newcastle Knights being refreshed from a little barley no, trip? not at all. Not at all. I just think um, they'll be they'll be good. They'll be at home. They'll, yep. be, they'll be at home. It's just going to be a good crowd. They've performed well at home good, this good year. Good crowd. All that all that kind of stuff. But um, I just think I just think the the Titans have a fucking good team. Mm. A little bit of confidence as well. Like I mean, they went that that that. What about my tears? Two like a week ago or two weeks ago, or even, I think it was even last week. I kind of it's completely flipped on its head. Yes. I've changed my tears already. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, this this competition changes week to week. My tears are awful as of round fucking ten. Yeah, when I did them in round nine, got some big um, got a big job there in the middle. Big job, Saifidi. Fodawake has been fucking outstanding, mate. Saifidi brothers, Daniel and Jacob both both played Origin. Mm. Mo F- Fodawake has played Origin. He missed out last year. Obviously, Tino's a lock. Big game through the middle for those boys. Yeah, it will big be. game because these, these, these Fafita, guys could be seeing each other. Wants to that go at it. He, he wants to go at it. Like I think, so Tyson Frizzell will be on that right side, right? Or Lock and Tyson, Fafita. yeah, Tyson's right. Lockie's Tyson's, left. Tyson needs to like take care of Fafita. He's got to eat, like, but that's what Foran does. He'll square, he'll Tyson square up. him up, yep. and he'll, he'll make sure he'll come in a little bit. Yeah, Fafita runs those fucking good in and out lines, outside in lines. If you don't come in on Fozzie, you can take it to the house. Yeah, Fozzie's got two of the best. Yeah. Should have scored three last <laughs> yeah. week. And then you got you know you got that little filler out the back, Campbell, yeah. Yeah. or he hits or he hits the center. Like, hey, just re-signed so as well. Shout out to Jaden Campbell. Just a quick one, little one on that, uh, Mace. Um, like I said last week, big raps about this kid, Ken O'Kinney, who come off the bench, played about 15, 20 minutes for him last week. Yep. Some nice little touches. Jaden Campbell and AJ Brimson. So what does that look like for the Titans in the next couple oh, of years? No. All of them play fullback. How long is Brimo there for? Well, I think – I'd assume Brimo's a lock. So, but then they just sort of – it's they just re-signed Jaden Campbell. It's, it makes for an interesting decision coming up because in their outside backs as well. So it's not even like you can go, all right, so just say if we can't – I think a positional change with Brimo to six, grooming under Fozzy could be the plan. You reckon? It has to be because, like, why else would you sign Jaden Campbell if you aren't going to keep him at or push him to fullback long term? Mm. Brimo's yeah. the most versatile one, versatile one. He can play centre, fullback, six. Jaden Campbell, is, I think, is just like a lock to play fullback long term, and then there's Keno Kinney, who's, um, like I said, massive reps on him. Then you've got then you've got Cam Pereira on the wing, yeah. Jojo Fafita, Phil Sami in the back. It's not like there are a shitload of wingers and centers that you can punt and like no. fill in. So, and maybe, Brian Kelly, know, Brian Kelly's a really really underrated He's center. Gun. They got some great outside backs, mm. and they're all young and fast and fit and like just talented. It's about finding the balance with this yeah. time teams, right? You know what are you going to do if you if you Brimo? Have to have a proper conversation with his mm. management and and the and the Titans going like, is this my team? Mm. Am mm. I going to be fullback next year? I don't think you'll be fullback. That's what I'm saying. And so what do you do? I'm not going to. Well, it's be, whether he's going to be, be six or not. It's whether he's going to be. He well, won't four, play fourteen. Four is going to be there next year, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But you got Fozzie. Could Fozzie play seven? And Tanner Boyd's been unreal, but 
I don't yeah. know. Okay. Big, de- big that's, decision. That's, well, that's 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 the only option. Mm. That sucks, but but it's good. It's a good problem to have. But, yeah, for um, sure. I'm Titans all the way on this one. Yeah, you need you, at, the, at the end of the day, you need depth in this competition right now. Yeah, the squads get stressed all the way to 25. So if you can find a way to balance all of them together. Uh, good decision for the Gold Coast Titans to be in, considering where they were yeah. last year when they didn't have a fucking backup yeah, plan at all. Um, Titans or Newcastle Knights, AG? Nah, Titans. Titans for me as well. All right, last game, and it is at – it's not called Brookie anymore. It's called Points Bet, I think, or whatever. Points Bet Stadium. No, it's called Four Pines. Four, four Pines. Pines. Four Pines. Uh, Manly, $2.55 under Dougs. At home against Cronulla Sharks, who are dollar fifty-two favourites, brought to you by our friends the Tab. The line is four and a half, so you can get plus four and a half about Manly or minus four and a half about the Sharks. Joshy Schuster has been named in the reserves as he works his way back from a quad concern. Brad Parker and Tolu Kola are the centre pairings after their successful turns last week. Skipper Dal Finucane came off the bench last week, but he will be in the starting lineup. Therefore, moving Cam McInnes back to the bench. OG. Is this a, is speaking of judgment days or um, Cronulla's going to whoop them? You think? Yeah, they can't. They they've got too much. They've got too much pride, and their coach too good to bounce back straight from a Dolphins they've performance. Got to, mate. They've got to. They have to. I know. I know. I'm, look, they're going to put up a fight, <clears throat> but um, Cooper John's going to be under the pump if he's uh, if he's going against um, T. Wilton and Talakai. T. Wilton. No, he's on the other side. Nick so it'd be Nikita. Yeah, he's a fucking gun. Jesse Ramian. He's in good nick, isn't um, he? Yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't see Manly winning that one. If even though it's a replay of the nineteen eighty seven grand final, IQ. <laughs> if Tommy Turbo is going to play Origin, does it have to be this week? Yes. Does he have to have an? Does he have to have a game. Tommy Turbo sort of performance? Yep. That's where I'm sort of leaning to. I'm thinking about taking Manly. I think Manly could Manly could win this game. Mm. They could, but I'm, I just think I just think if if. If Cronulla are that, if they're supposed to be that team, mm. they're not going to Brookie. They're not losing two in a row. And, you know, I, I think Manly's a decent team, but they're not a – I think I think Cronulla's a top four team. Yeah. I think – yeah, top six, the second team. No, top, top four. I think I think, I think think Cronulla, I'm not going to get – let this. Uh, Dol- the Dolphins lost Swamey. They were trending the right way. Both of these teams, if Manly any chance of making the eight, they have to win this game. Yeah. If Cronulla are a genuine uh, title contender, yeah. title contender, they have to win this game as well. So we'll see. I don't mind taking – same as the Parramatta game. I don't mind taking Manly with the start and I, I like the points. I'll, I like them as a bit of an underdog. I don't like yeah, them when they're yeah, favourite. Carl Lawton, Ben Trebojevic. Carlos. Bullimore and Aaron Woods. Aloe, Tulangi, Alakwatu, Kepi, Croker. Mate, they can, they, can ma- they can match it. Like, they can. I just think that back line is red hot. You got Brad. Oh, Brad Parker's back. Yep. He was back last Great. week. Yeah. Him good. and Kola. And, and Kola. Yep. Kola. Um, fuck, they've got a decent team. Mm. If you can have, t- if, we, if we can get Turbo at an eight out of 10. Seven. He- I think you get to, if, he, if he's a seven out of 10. Then there, there are a lot better chance, obviously. Nearly talk them away out, but I just think the way that they're coached and the pride that they have in that jersey, bounce and back the sharks, the bounce. They're, they're, they've got that. I, mean, right. I think Fitzy would be fucking into them all week. All right, but he's not going to question their their ability. Sharks, Manly, Sharks. Okay, all right. Let's get into chasing the great weight, Mace. Ooh. Last couple of weeks been yeah. awful. I'm simplifying it. Okay. I was I was hitting the fours and fives there for a couple of weeks. Couple of twos, righto. I'm just going to go all wingers this week. So confidence is down a little bit, but let's fucking – let's lock it in. So we're going to go yeah. our boy Jesse Arthurs at $2, Melbourne versus Brisbane. I've got a big return for the Fox, Josh Adokar at $1.80, Bulldogs versus Warriors. I'm going to go Corey Allen at $2.50. Corey Allen. Penrith versus Sydney Roosters. I'm going to go Tane Milne with Souths against the Tigers. A dollar eighty, dollar about that is. I think that's really good money. Um, I'm gonna go Magic Murray Talangi, dollar seventy North Queensland at home to St George Illawarra Dragons. Then we got Jordy Raps at home against the Parramatta all Eels. Yeah, all wingers all the way through. Greg Marzu for a bounce back game against his old team, the Titans. I reckon he'll be doing his best to yeah. score against them. And I'm going Sabi at a dollar ninety 
against that Sharks left edge that's had its little problems in the past couple of weeks. Valis Defade. Over Katoa, he's, he'll be over Katoa. He's on, no, he's on Mulatalo's side. He's on the right side. It'd be hard. It'd be hard. Yep. So uh, Ruben Gaz is back on that left wing with the return of the centres. So a nice, solid wingers multi, all wingers. But could it fucking easily work? Mm, that can happen, eh? Get a little sneaky little 10 on that. We'll see what happens. All right. All right. Let's get into the Levels Punters Club Bets Friends channel special. And you can find that on the Tab app. Go and find us, the Levels Punters Club. It's the Levels Network, baby. And we Help are well see. and truly Drew. Drew. Drew we're Hutchinson. Drew, we Drew Hutchinson. We're Hutchinson. <laughs> All right, so this week we're going the Rabbitohs. Like I said, Mace, I think they do an absolute number on the Tigers. Yeah. They're the type of team they can play bully ball on the West Tigers. They give me minus 15 and a half about the South Sydney Rabbitohs. And another guy I'm looking at, the left edge for Cronulla Sharks has been a bit suspect. So give me Hamole Alakwatu to score in the first 60 minutes Talakai for the Bird Moylan. Talakai Moylan, Wilton Edge. Moylan. And you he's can been get, playing good, Moylan. He has. I like him, but hey, Alakwatu is a different animal. It is. Dip levels. 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 Shit, man. He's you fucking destroyed. In, when it comes to second roles in the competition and try scoring, and pissed off. there's levels to, to oh, that. These next two games are very important for him. Origin. This is an origin oppo- opportunity yeah. to if put he, his best foot forward. Carve these blokes up. All right. And if he scores in the first 60 minutes, you can get that for a $7.50 max bet of $25. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season, so please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelpline.org.au. And just remember, you can find all our current LPC bets under the Bets Friends banner on the Tab app, and I am going to be updating at least two or three this weekend as well. Thank you for joining us on the preview. Enjoy your footy over the weekend, and we'll see you for the review next week, OG. Thank you.